Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. I've never seen so much interest in XP and specifically how to get it right now in FC24. This season that is soon ending has presented a massive problem as people are struggling, myself included. I'm barely getting to the end of this season by the time it all goes away with the big time rewards that are here. It's important that we want to get there, right? So what happened to XP? Why is it such a struggle this season? Did EA forget to release some? Are they going to release more before the season ends? I want to talk about that today. And there's one SPC that we're all looking forward to today. I bet you can guess what it is. Let's talk about that and more. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up. Comment down below uh, how much XP you're on and what level you're on, or if you've already completed the season, and subscribe if you're new. Now, let's look at yesterday's Sunday content first, as we always do. Guys, it was a really quiet day. War a day for EA yesterday in terms of the content. It was a hero player pick that they opted for instead of the icon player pick, which we were hoping to see. 91 plus. I mean, at this stage of the game, I don't know too many people that are wanting a chance at the heroes. The only shot you might take at this is for one of the greats of the game heroes that was just recently released. We're talking Dina Tally, Cap Devia, maybe Tevez, who's still live, Cordoba, still live. You know, one of those few players or like a fantasy Ginola, right? I can't think of too many other heroes that you would want at this stage of the game with three or four playstyle pluses unless it's just somebody sentimental for you. And the price of this SPC, 100,000 coins, sure. You know, if you hit big, you're loving it. But most of these cards you're going to be packing out of this are going to be probably the Golasso cards and the fantasy cards, which are well behind the curve. So I think for most people, this SPC is just not it let's be completely honest it's not it's a big step down from the icon player pick and it's just not something that a lot of us are super interested in so moving on from that we did have a player SPC yesterday for a big name player a guy that hasn't had a card for a long time Lissandro Martinez and again I'm looking at this SPC from yesterday just saying kind of what? EA, what is this SBC? An Argentinian live and upgrading Copa America PTG Lissandro Martinez. Three star, four star, five foot ten. The pace is the best stat in the card. 94 pace. He's got four playstyle pluses, but slide tackle, bruiser, jockey, and intercept. I would say two of those are good. He does have uh, three plus passing playstyles, and he does have aerial and power header as well, but no anticipate is a bit odd. I really wish they would have given him anticipate plus instead of slide tackle plus, although, you know, his slide tackles in real life, he is pretty crazy, right? The Destroyer is his nickname. So I think there's a little bit of hype here for this Martinez just because he's really cheap. He's two squads, 86,000 coins. Actually, in fact, does he require a team of the week? No. I will probably complete this SBC because I have a bunch of fodder still, and he's only in 85 and 87 rated squads, and he's an Argentine live card. So I like that, but it almost just feels like, I don't know why I'm doing this SBC just because I have extra fodder. Like, even for the upgrades that this card got, sure, if you technically look at this card, he was released as a 92, and then EA gave him the upgrades to get him to a 94, right, for what um, Argentina has done so far. All that he can get from now on is a five-star, five-star upgrade because he's not 5-5, five, five, right? And the upgrade for winning the semifinal, which would be the next game of Copa America against Canada. This is going to be a great game. But he would go five-star, five-star, which does that really suit a center back that can only play center back and not center defensive mid? Not that much. So that's the upgrade if they win their next game. And if they go on and win the whole Copa America and repeat as champs, then he goes to a 95. I get why the SBC is cheap because there's a lot of, not a lot of upgrade ceiling on this card, but this is more so just a fun one, right? Maybe if you're a GGMU fan, if you're Argentinian, or if you just have uh, some place to put some fodder, that's the reason to do this SBC. But other than that, I think a lot of us were hoping for like maybe not an SBC that's like going to challenge the likes of Araujo or maybe even like a Joe Gomez type of card, but like this is one of the center backs right now that we're using in game, or maybe uh, somebody from one of the most recent promos. Maybe you even packed like a Desai from last week's promo. Like that's a really good cheap center back card that, in my opinion, is clear even with three playstyle pluses, clear over this Martinez. So that was just a little bit of a head scratcher yesterday for this Martinez here. I think it could have been a lot better. I was hoping for a lot better, 
but that is kind of what uh, we got. It was just mid. Now, really quiet Sunday, guys. Other than that, all they did, I believe, yesterday was refresh the store packs. The 575k pack was not there for me before because I opened it on Friday, and it is there again. But I do want to look over a couple of Copa America stat upgrades that did come through in the early hours. The first of which, actually, I just checked to see in my club. Did they actually upgrade Joe Gomez? No, they gave him a plus one overall. He still has 94 pace and 96 defending. He should get a stat boost there, but he has not gotten one. So I think EA is frauding a little bit on that upgrade, but this is the one that I want to check really quick. Guys, the SBCs from the earlier parts of PTG, uh, the week one, team one of that promo, and even some of the cards that were in packs, but specifically the SBCs have gone crazy. The Luis Diaz and the Araujo, who we already looked at, look unbelievable. This card, I don't know if he's ever going to leave my team until I get a, I don't know, maybe that Tony Cruz will make him leave my team, but 4-5 Benton core now with 98 dribbling, 96 physical. He's 93 plus in every single face down the card. This guy just looks freaking mental, and he's so good in game. What a card. That's probably my personal favorite upgrade from the upgrades that happened earlier yesterday. The Araujo and the Luis Diaz, they gave him chip shot plus, so that's a little bit average. But now you have 95 shooting and 95 passing, along with the 4-star, 5-star. So it's the next game for Colombia. It's going to be a big one. Colombia-Uruguay, right? I believe that's the matchup. Uh, let's double-check that really quick. Copa America, Colombia-Uruguay. That's a huge game. Does Uruguay's cards like Araujo and Benton? core keep getting upgraded or does Luis Diaz go to 5-5 it's a W regardless but again just a shout for the SBCs being so insane during PTG that card looks nice Araujo looks absolutely insane really wishing I would have done that SBC and not Joe Gomez I wish I would have done it the other way around but this is the upgrade that I want to point out Lusumi Lukumi I don't know how to say this guy's name the Colombian center back who is in PTG team 2 He's only 38k. He's a crazy card for 38,000 coins. But this is the exact same situation that happened with Kamavinga in France. He got a double boost, and he was not supposed to get a double boost. He got a double boost because he already had the fourth play style plus when he actually shouldn't have, right? Uh, Colombia only had two wins. They got their third. So then Luis Diaz got a plus one and a play style plus. This guy dropped with four play style pluses, so they gave him a plus two. Here's my question once again. Why did the English cards like John Stones and others, but specifically John Stones, why did they not get a plus two as well? Because he was dropped with four play style pluses, and he technically should not have been like Ali Watkins was dropped with only three play style pluses. So again, I think the reason why they didn't give the England cards a double boost is because they already made a mistake with them. Um, and I, I'm just, that's my best guess, to be honest. But a uh, little inconsistency here with the upgrades. And there have been some other mistakes recently that we've seen with them too, right? We talked about those, even those England cards getting the play style pluses early. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to highlight those Copa upgrades because I missed not having football on yesterday for upgrades to follow. And that Benton Core, Araujo, and Luis Diaz look freaking amazing. Even the Palestri card, like I packed him twice. Uh, he looks like a pretty dope card as well. I mean, if you're a guy go and win on that their next game, this Palestri is going to be five star, five star, which will be pretty crazy. That might be a card to watch later on in the week if Uruguay do end up winning versus Colombia. So that's kind of the upgrade situation going on right there. Now, I want to talk about XP because, guys, I cannot tell you any other time, singular time in this game, since they started doing the season passes with XP that we have to grind up towards, right? Kind of like a battle pass type of vibe. I've never heard so many people asking how to get XP, where do I get it, because they're behind. And it's really because the way that EA have set up this season, usually this is not a big issue, right? But now it is because all of these insane cards are here in the season pass. Now, I know a lot of you guys have gotten these already, but if you haven't been grinding the game every single day, playing foot champs, squad battles, rivals, and even just missing a couple of objectives here or there, you've probably missed out on some XP, which in a normal season, Season would be completely fine but not this season because EA have not compensated and kind of like let people catch up at the end with bonus XP or bonus objectives we've had none 
of that. But maybe that is because the actual cards that we get here are so good. Guys, this Memphis Depay just got a fourth play style plus. Incisive uh, pass plus, right? Of course, you got the Cruz and the Gerard both was four. You've got Pushkas who's got four. And the Bernardo Silva has even got four. The crazy thing is, if this Bernardo Silva and or this Depay were on the market right now, they would at least be 500k, probably even more than that. Especially because they're both, or at least uh, Depay is still live with Netherlands, still in the Euros. That is crazy. These are some of the best season pass rewards that we have had in a very long time. I mean, basically almost ever, especially since we're towards the later part of the game and the ratings are higher. But all this being free is pretty crazy but i honestly think that's why ea have not released as much xp this time they didn't want it to be as easy for everybody to get these cards and you know they did a couple of things to make sure that they made it harder for xp to be harder to obtain right the daily and the weekly xp is less like i'm here i'm literally what 375 xp away from push guys as you saw right there and i need to do this uh play four more matches in any ultimate team game mode to get that done and i probably just need to play a little bit of the cup right maybe a couple games play three and i'll get that done um i don't know if i'm gonna play foot champs and get those xp rewards but i'll be done there but the uh daily play where is it at? The daily objectives here only give you 25, 25, 75 XP, which is way less than normal. It was given, I think, 150 per day in some of the older seasons. And I think even the weekly XP has dropped as well a little bit, 200 XP per thing. And that's really made the grind slower. One thing that EA did last season that they have not introduced yet, which guys, for you guys really trying to get to the end of the season, I hope that EA do this is they added XP for games. If EA were to add this like for the last couple of days of the season, that'd be awesome. I think it would be a little bit too late, but if they added like 20 some XP per game, which this is a screenshot from a Dementes tweet that was literally like two months ago, guys. They did this in season six before this festival of football was released. If they were to do this sort of thing for the end of the season, that would be awesome. I really hope they do that. And it's one of the ways that I think they should have allowed us to get XP for a little bit longer because uh, this one's been a tough one to get XP for because they just haven't released as much. Now, how else could they add a little bit more XP for all of you guys that are trying to grind to the end? And again, I know I'm talking about this like I haven't got to the end yet. I'm here very close. I know a lot of you guys have gotten it as well. I just know there's so many people who haven't. That's why this is such a big issue. Well, EA could drop a store pack. That would be the most kind of what you would expect EA way to get it done. They dropped a pack like this earlier on this year, a seasonal booster pack. Now, this is not a pack that is still... I would say in the code for this season, but that would be a pretty EA way to do things, right? Is put a store pack in there that gives some XP. Oh, hey, you can finish off the season, right? I also think that EA should release a bonus objective. They should just say, oh, hey, here's four or 5,000 XP. We see that almost every single season, the last two especially. They've not released enough XP during the whole season cycle, and so they go ahead and they release XP in like a bonus objective. Do I think there's actually a high likelihood of that happening, as I have the very tough choice here, not for me at least, to take Tony Cruz at level 34. We're almost done and down here to the end. Do I think they're going to do that? I honestly don't think they're going to. I'm just being honest. I think EA is, does not want these cards to be as easily obtained. And if you haven't done the work up until now to get the XP, they don't want people to have all of them. So that is very unfortunate. But how is there, like, what can you get XP from right now if you're still trying to grind it, if you're, like, so close? Because I got so many tweets yesterday, guys. I put out a tweet actually a couple days ago of, like, me being 5,000 XP away, and I was like, hey, yo, I might be not getting enough XP to get this. And it got a lot of views and a lot of people in the comments are saying the same thing. I'm so cooked, I'm so close, but I'm not gonna get it. Just double check. Make sure you've got all of your daily plays done, right? Don't forget that. Like playing three games, I know we have the daily play objective, but you also have the daily um, 75 XP that you can get from the daily objectives, right? Win one and score three, it's pretty easy. Get that done. Just double check that you don't have anything else left over in here. Second thing I would say is play foot champs because foot champs is the only competition running still that can get you XP. You don't get XP for the playoffs rewards, but you do get XP for the finals rewards. Um, and it, it depends on what rank you get. But let's, let's say you get 11 wins, you do get yourself here 
uh, 1,350 XP. So Foot Champs has been a lot. And they've given out XP as well in squad battles and rivals, but those reward periods will not happen in time for us to get XP towards this season. I, I don't think rivals rewards will actually be a part of this season's XP. I think it'll be towards next season. You might have to help me out with that in the comments because this is not something normally that we're paying attention to too much. But I believe the rewards count for the next season, not the previous one. So that is one thing I would say. Uh, double check me on that down in the comments. But yeah, just make sure you're doing everything that you can available in there. And if you have not bought the kits in the store, I mean, technically, it's a bit of a paid way to go about it. But it's like 40,000 coins for the kits. Um, and it, it did help me get a little bit of an XP boost as well. Uh, I bought the kits. It was really easy to get it done. Play three, score three, win three. So all of that to say, I've never talked about XP so much in this game, but it is actually a big deal because of the cards that you get. Even though people say that that level 35 push gust maybe isn't worth the hype. That's what I've been hearing. That he's maybe not that cracked. So just hope as well if you're way behind that EA drop a bonus objective. I think that'll be something we keep checking each and every day of the content drop this week just to see what happens ahead of a new season, which I think on Thursday is going to contain these cards you heard it here first we'll talk about it more as we get there now let's focus on content today on monday because there's one spc like i said earlier that we need today and i bet a lot of you guys can guess it right it's because we need to get rid of this 81 plus player pick thank goodness let's get something new in here actually it's not something new that we want it's something tried true proven and worthwhile the 82 plus player pick the same one they keep rotating with here, bring it back. Eight golds, one rare, and we will be there, and that'll help. I'm not going to say it's going to fix the craftability of the menus at the moment. It will help, though, uh, because that player pick is so much better for less golds being able to be turned in, and it just allows you to do more player picks over time, which gives you, of course, mathematics, more chances to pack the cards that are in packs because you're opening more player picks. Now, I can't speak, to be honest, for how the pack weight's been because I have not opened very many packs since Friday. And on Friday, all I did was pack Palestri twice. So I need to get ripping today on stream. I'm excited to do that. I have not even done, I've done one 86 double, but those have been, well, I guess the 86 double you see here in my unassigned. It's a Casemiro and an Odegaard or another 87. So that's actually not too terrible by an 86 double standards. But what else could we get today on a Monday that could uh, improve things? I'm actually maybe not looking forward to the other player pick SBC that we could get. We had the 85 plus last week. They're probably going to drop the 84 plus this week. I think it's time that we go to an 86 plus player pick. I've been saying this for like three or four weeks now. 86 plus player pick needs to be out here instead of an 84 plus. But with the way that the content is going on this game, guys, right? We had the crazy week last week. It's definitely dipped off this week. Like not crazy low, but it's definitely dipped off. I just think that all of the content throughout the rest of this week is probably going to kind of follow that sort of pattern, to be completely honest. This game likes to go in the in the hills and the valleys. We have the good points and the peaks, and we have the valleys. And we feel like we're kind of going downhill at the moment right now. But I would say hopefully they change that to the 86-plus player pick today, but I'm not expecting it. Player SBCs. We still have a name list here with Connor Gallagher, Zakaria, and Taram and Sarmiento being the, the names that we have left. Gallagher is like uh, the biggest SBC so far left to be released that I think would have the most hype. But again, will he actually be hyped with so few games uh, being released? He should have four playstyle pluses um, on this card when he is released. But with so many, so few games left, I mean, um, will EA just do a, another situation like they did with Sandra Martinez and drop a Gallagher card that's just kind of just average? And maybe it's cheap, but just kind of average. I hope that they don't. I hope they drop us an actual decent card uh, that we could maybe craft towards, put a little bit of fodder into, and then ride it with England to see if they can go ahead and go through the semifinal to the final, get that five-star, five-star upgrade, and then if they win, he gets the plus one. So that's the whole thing. It's got to be a really good card to begin with if it's going to be a solid SBC at this stage of the competitions. Is it worth buying fodder as well for all these SBCs that have been put out? We talked about fodder a little bit over the weekend, it doesn't look good, guys. Like, maybe 84s, 83s, 4s, and 5s. Really, it's going to be tomorrow's content on Tuesday and the Wednesday content that will really move the fodder. So if you want to make an investment, I would focus on that lower to middle tier between today and tomorrow because, you know, it is right on Tuesdays. We get those Gamble Tuesday packs. Last week, it was really good with the 93-plus pick, I'm imagining. 
I hope this comes back, but they also could take it a step down and it wouldn't be as good. And man, if they just gave us this great to the game team to upgrade again, we would absolutely love that. Make it even a team one and a team two, make it a little bit cheaper. I mean, this one was cheap to begin with, but there could be so many good like gamble type content SBCs. It's just, we can't do too many of them like unlimited repeatable. And I think that's what's coming during footies, but for right now we're not there yet. So yeah, for fodder, I think I'd look on the middle, the lower tier, and then for the rest of the market, um, man, the rest of the market today, guys, it's just it's just pretty cooked out here. A lot of prices just kind of seem to be sliding down, especially on the PTGs. Like Havertz was just under 2 million coins. Stones, after the upgrade, it's even down further to 1.2. Baron Torres is 300k again. Uh, Kamavinga is still not on the market. Hopefully, it's a price range update today. If you're on a high budget, watch that Kamavinga when he gets the upgrade. He will definitely be in demand. That'll be a crazy card. But as I keep looking at these PTGs that have been re-released, um, I'm still a bit shocked that some of these cards, yeah, sure, I know they got upgrades, but they're like up a lot in price, like Chiesa even. I know he's not getting re-released, but what is going on here with Chiesa being 1.3 million coins? Why is he going, okay, it's a rarity spike. Okay, never mind. He was 1.1 mil, 1 mil flat. Uh, this would be an amazing card to trade with, right? No longer getting upgrades. He went from a million flat and sold at 1.2 yesterday a couple times. That's a sign to trade with some of these cards that have gotten knocked out of the competition that are very rare. Kavadit Skelia will be another one if you're trying to make coins. Yesterday, he went to 403 and then is now back up to like 480 he just had a peek at. Yeah, guys, look at these cards. Trade with the ones that are not even live anymore. They have rare fluctuations because people still want to use them. The ones that have four playstyle pluses for sure would have some hype left in them. And uh, wow, Vlahovic is even down after the Evo. Full Krug, I'm glad that I invested in him. He's 55k. He's been rising up since the Germany loss, but still with the Evo, people are putting him in. Absolutely love that. So that's a good one to see. But a lot of the market is cooked. The icons, man, look at how cooked these are. Henri's 2.1. I sold Zico yesterday twice for a loss. Uh, last night, I thought he was cheap. Well, I guess he just kept going cheaper, right? I guess people are getting, you know, the Puchkas and they don't want Zico. I don't know what it is. Del Piero, I sold too early. He's actually doing well. I sold him for 400k and now he's 440. So it's nice to see some of these cards go up. Like Rykard is up. Uh, Desai is up. Where's Zanetti? Zanetti is 220k. So the ones that are either still live and very favored are still doing well. And then some of the ones that are very rare still, like Cannavaro. Pirlo's doing okay. Um, not that great yet. Yeah, the market just seems to be very like wishy-washy and very mid at the moment. So it's honestly, I think lost people more coins than made. Uh, but that's just me kind of looking at it from an outside perspective and not really investing too much since Friday. I made a bunch of coins Friday. And then since then, it's just kind of been super mid, probably some tax losses and some definite losses too. Like I bought the Zico for 1.3 last night, sold it for 131. And I still have the Zico that I bought on Friday for 1.4. Uh, no, this is the one that I bought last night for 1.307. I'm just trying to get it out right now in the one twos because nothing right now makes me feel like um, this card is really going to go up. So I'm just going to take my coins there. But at least you sell the full crooks that are making us coins. I'm going to keep riding with those. And uh, what is this? If we sell this card, we're going to have right around 7 million. So I'll take that for this time of the year. But uh, yeah, the market just seems really cooked. There's not a lot of demand, which means it's probably not a really great time to trade. Last thing I want to talk about is if you stayed for the end of the video, maybe you saw this yesterday, maybe you didn't. But one man announces retirement, which could mean another end of an era. Um, a lot of people talking about Tiago. Wait, did we already have a Tiago? We had a Tiago flashback during team of the season, didn't we? Tiago Alcantara flashback SBC. Yeah, I did it. It's in my club. Would we get an end of an era? Maybe. Uh, but it was announced that he is retiring from professional football uh, yesterday. So big tweet there. Big news. A lot of Liverpool, you know, Barca, Bayern, uh, Spain fans as well. Thinking about him. Maybe an end of an era to come. And then speaking of kind of legends and greats, Buffon, according to this leak, is being tested as an icon for FC 25. So that's kind of like an FC 25 type leak. But that is um, that's interesting. I've also heard that Gareth Bale is on FIFA Mobile as an icon, or that's a leak or something like that. So that's really interesting. But we're kind of getting into that season as well. I've already mentioned FC 25 a few times. I think there's probably going to be more news on that next week. Uh, we'll have to see. We're really going to have to see what comes out on that. But we're kind of getting into that time of the year where some of that stuff starts to get dropped, the rumors, the changes, 
we'll see, right? We take it all with a pinch of salt until it's actually from EA Sports, but fingers crossed for massive gameplay updates, right? That is the backbone of this game, and that is what needs to be better in FC25. But to not get into that too much because there's a whole bag to unpack with that, we'll keep it there, guys. If you enjoyed the video for today, drop a thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions, and of course, subscribe if you're new. I will see you guys in a Twitch stream today. We didn't stream during the weekend. It was a very busy one. I'm excited to get back on the game today. I need to do some grinding, some crafting, and uh, I need to get this Pushkas because if I don't get him, I don't get that XP, I'm going to be very sad, and the season ends very soon. So I'll see you guys there. That link is down below in the description if you want to check us out there. But it's been Nathan for the count. See you guys there. I'm out. Peace.